Joining me now here on the NBA Report, a man that's going to defend his 165-pound title, Unified 36. Pat, man, I appreciate time. I, I was talking to a cap, and, he, and, of course, you won the welterweight title, and he was telling me that you basically, because they were getting rid of the 170-pound division, going with 165-175, yeah. and it was yeah. your choice of whether you won the 165-pound title or 175-pound title. You, you yeah. picked 65. Was there, was there a reason for that? Well, I'm... I'm pretty small welterweight. You know what I mean? Like, did, uh, did you watch my last fight? I have not I've been able to see it now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm always the I'm always the small well, smallest welterweight. But uh, in my last fight, I was especially small against Byron Phillips. So yeah, 165. I fought my whole kickboxing career at that. So that's perfect for me. And of course, you got the win there uh, in, in the fifth round. Um, mm-hmm. you know, when, when I talked to Jake, it, it was very interesting. Is he? He's like, look, he was. I just saw they were looking for a fight. He goes, I didn't know who the opponent was. He goes, I just saw the opportunity. Uh, but yeah. obviously, he's a you know he's a UFC vet. Um, he's he's mm-hmm. been up and down uh, since his his run in the UFC. I mean, do you remember when when Unify called you about this fight? What, what your initial thought was? Oh well, I already knew I was fighting in March, and. Uh... Yeah, they just said, hey, we got an opponent for you. He fought in the UFC. I'm like, yeah, good. And I didn't know shit about him either. So <laughs> that's uh, both of us going into this fight blind. Well, uh, I mean, I, initially, initially blind. <laughs> I mean, was there anything that stuck out to you when, when you got the name and, you know, you, you and your, your team started looking at him and uh, that stuck out to you? Well, I just want to step up in competition, right? I just, uh, I want to test myself. I want to see where I'm at, right? And uh, he made it to the big show. I want to go to the big show, so let's see how I match up. It's really I mean, that it's it's really that simple. It's cut and dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, is it, I mean, is it just kind of one of those things like you said? Look, for me to to get that that next big opportunity, I, I got to show people, you know, around the MMA world that look, I'm, I'm ready to take on anybody, anytime, anywhere. Basically, yeah, yeah, basically it, and. uh yeah, 165. So, like, yeah, I won it at 170. I won the title at 170. But I don't feel like I'm the champ at 165. I didn't win no belt at 165. So, to me, I'm like Jake. You know, it's even. We're both going in there trying to win a title. And both neither of us are the champions the way I look at it. I mean, obviously, you're coming off a, a five. You got into the fifth round. I mean, mm-hmm. um, do you feel like maybe that's a little bit of advantage because you're coming off a five-round fight? Uh, well, I've always been known for my cardio, so... Yeah, well, I mean, I've been known for my cardio in the gym. <laughs> I guess not in the fights because I've been ending them usually pretty quickly. But, uh, yeah, with Viren, that was a really good test because I could show everybody that, you know, I do have that cardio. I do have that uh, that work ethic, that drive to win, that um, never die attitude. So, What did you learn about yourself in the Phillips fight? Uh, that I'm on the right track, you know. That, I, that I'm on the right track, you know, that that fight was, he was stronger than me initially, uh, faster, he moved he moved well. Uh, we were wrestling, Greco, freestyle, there was some jujitsu went to the ground, we were boxing, then we both stood up tall, we were kickboxing, it was everything, right? It was full MMA, so I got to learn a lot about myself. Was there anything in that fight that uh, made you realize, hey, we need to make some, some minor tweaks in how you prepare for a fight? I don't think you can prepare for a guy like that. You know, he was like 6'3", and his his reach was incredible. He could, standing, he could wrap his arms around my back and almost kimura lock me. And his grip strength was incredible. Like, it, it was just a weird... To, to break the grip strength, I couldn't just do the basic, you know, mm-hmm. turn the turn the wrist in. I had to use my knees and my legs to just kick it off, and he'd grab it right again. And it was just such a... It was just a long strategy. To, to beat Byron, you know, I'm glad it was five rounds. Actually, I I, I still would have won a decision because I know I won two of those rounds clearly. Mm-hmm. But I I really enjoyed that it was five rounds because it gave me just like I told you last time, it gave me two extra rounds to try to knock him out, <laughs> and I did. The strongest guy you've ever competed against? Yeah, and probably one of the strongest guys I've trained with. Like mm-hmm. that's supposed to be my weight class, so. And when I talked to Jake, you know, we were talking about it being at 165, and and he and he loved it. He's like, man, this is great. Even though he said he goes, look, mm-hmm. I'm I'm. He goes, if I get back to the UFC, I'm a 55er. That that's where I yeah. know I got to be. I mean, 
for you, yeah. I mean, do you kind of feel like you're you're stuck in between two weight classes? Uh, I don't know, honestly. I know I could I could make 55 because I got teammates that walk around the same weight as me, right? That fight at 55. It's just I I don't like cutting a lot of weight. That's that's not really my style. You know, I know you can absorb a a shot better if you're not so depleted, right? Well, I don't know that based on science, but I definitely know it because I've I've seen it. You know, as a coach, I've seen a lot of guys cut incredible weight and then get hit by a nothing jab and almost go to sleep. You know, so I think they're there is something to do with that right so yeah for me I, I would rather not cut the weight i'd rather be the smaller guy with that's faster more cardio bring it on let's fight i don't care if you're bigger than me you know so do, I, I know yeah. you um you know, we, we've talked in the past about how you use science mm-hmm. to kind of to help you out i mean for mm-hmm. you is it just an education process of like learning what works best for your body and, and how to maximize yeah. performance yeah, well, it's it's been ongoing, right? Because I, I was kickboxing forever, right? I, I I had a lot of fights as a kickboxer, and I've always been tweaking my diet, tweaking my training, tweaking this and that. And then I then I stepped into a sport where it's so many different um, martial arts, right? You got the boxing, wrestling. So now it's like, oh man, now I'm back to zero and figuring it out again, right? Now by the eighth fight, I'm starting to really know my diet, what I can do, what I can't do, my limitations. Uh, to stop me from getting injured, you know, because because I have I have had the past injuries, right? So it, we yeah. we've talked about that. I want to say it was the last time we talked. You were like, "Hey, you know, I couldn't tell you I was a little banged up heading to the last fight." But yeah. I mean, I mean, there's really, I mean, no one's ever 100 percent going into a fight. I did 21 days of the elliptical against Byron Phillips because I tore my rib. I was on the I was on an elliptical machine. I couldn't do I couldn't box. I couldn't get hit. I couldn't wrestle. I couldn't do anything. I what happened was I did most of my camp in Ontario and I wanted to do the end of my camp in Alberta. So I flew in on the Sunday to do the promotional video where I hit pads with my, my coach Cadro at um Frank Lee's. And then I knew I was tired because I didn't I didn't take any time off for two weeks. And drive into the gym i know i was wrestling I, I shouldn't have went right everything was telling me not to go and sure enough the first real practice i had i got hurt but i was already in alberta and i only came there to wrestle and do jiu-jitsu and work with my old teammates and i did fuck all except for cardio and lose weight and just yeah yeah it was very frustrating i mean is it is it tough as a competitor when you know your body is kind of seeing you signs but you still want to put the work in yeah, I'm, I'm like my worst enemy, I'd say. You know what I mean? Like, the, I don't know. If I can get through the training camp relatively injury-free, I'm confident as all hell, right? Once, once come, I just have that mantra in my head, like, just get to the fight, get to the fight, get to the fight, you know? Make the weight. And then by the time it's all over and I'm waking up the morning of the fight and I'm eating breakfast and I'm having bread again, I'm on an all different level, right? I'm confident. I'm, I'm ready to go. So how, how, yeah. how do you how do you see the victory coming in this one? Ah, man, I never know. You know, I'm 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 always going for it, right? But I know my opponent is um a vet, so he's gonna be going for it too. Yeah, I'm just excited. Either way, if it's a decision, it's a decision. If it's a KO again, it's KO again. You know, I I don't know. I'm just uh I'm just stoked. I mean I'm very grateful for the opportunity, you know, because he is a vet and I'm I'm not a big name yet, so <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, he he kind of mentioned that. He said, he goes, "Look, I was I was at the place that Pat's at now." He goes, "When mm-hmm. I was making my rise," so he's like, he's like, "Look, I I know where he's at," and he kind of alludes mm-hmm. to the fact of, "Hey, I believe my experience is going to be very key for this one." Um, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, is that what? You, I mean, I think you know, I mean, is that kind of one maybe? Is that a more of a mental thing when, when someone's talking about their experience level, or do you think there's a, a lot of truth to that? I mean, man, yeah, sure, he's got the MMA experience, but I do got the stand-up experience. You know, like, the, don't don't kid yourself. It's my 47th fight. 47th fight. Like, I know he's got a lot of fights too, but I've been there. I've done it as well. You know, maybe not in MMA, but, man, I can fight. You know, I've knocked everybody out that I've ever fought. So let's let's see what happens, right? So with with the experience that you have, is there a, a magic number you want to get to 
of like, by the time I'm done, I want to have X amount of fights. Oh man, if I wasn't doing this, I'd be kickboxing still, right? I'd be doing something. I'm, I'm a competitor. You know, it's not that I enjoy hurting people. Like I'm, I think you're a little touched if if that's your reason for fighting. I just enjoy the 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 highest form of competition, which is MMA. And of course, this all goes down on March the first, the main event mm-hmm. of Unified Thirty Six. As always, Pat, man, I appreciate time. Let everyone know they can follow you on social media. And of course, those sponsors that help support you. Yeah, I have so many sponsors. I just want to thank them all in in, in just saying that. <laughs> and uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's P-A-T-P-Y-T.